welcome back everybody to a special uh, edition of the Mevo Marathon. Today we're going to be reviewing the uh, solo rules for Arcadia Quest. Now these recently just were uh, released in their beta form, so these are not official yet, but uh, Simon, come on, uh, call me or not, however you want to say it, uh, released these rules um, uh, you know I think that they had them kind of in the works and with uh, the whole social distancing thing and stay-at-home orders they decided to push them out a little sooner get people's feedback so this is my feedback um, essentially a, a quick overview of the solo rules and then I'll play a couple rounds um, then I'm gonna give you my thoughts and then I'm going to play a slightly different way um, and we'll see you know which one you guys like better. I'll let you know which one I like better, of course. Um, but for the solo rules, essentially, A, what you have to do is um, complete the two um, PvE goals. You, you get rid of the PvP goals because obviously you don't need those. Um, and you so in this scenario which is the rookery we're gonna have to kill the hammer beast man and rescue the eagles um this is our my third scenario in this campaign i've been kind of going back and forth playing different ways in this solo mode through solo campaign so you'll see that my three people i'm playing with maya johan and green sleeves here they have some upgraded weapons um so these are the two hammer beastmen, this guy and this guy way over here who's hiding behind my dice tower. And the two uh, eagles are in here, guarded by these two guys. So um, what the solo rules essentially say is that A, you're going to um, play out each one of your characters in, in one turn. So they're each going to get their three movement and one attack. You play them, then you are going to roll some dice to see which units will activate. I also have this deck of cards here, which is essentially all the other um, cards that were not the level two and threes for the monsters we have out on the board. So I have these out here for reference, and then all the other ones, the level ones and the level fours and fives, and the level sixes are all in this deck here shuffled up. So between rolling some dice and flipping a card over, that's gonna determine who um, gets to activate next. So essentially I'm gonna get three people to activate and they're gonna get two. So we'll see how it goes. Um, other than that, it plays exactly the same according to their solo rules. So with retaliation, um, and movement and, and things like that are all going to come into play. Nothing is is different per se. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, our goal is to get into one of these two rooms here and claim one of these tokens, which represents an eagle in this scenario. <coughs> and then we'll have to teleport into one of these rooms, either this one or the one way over there. It doesn't matter. I don't even know why I set that guy up because since I get to teleport, I'm just going to teleport to this one because it's closer to me. And defeat him he's kind of trapped in this room all by himself um, and I believe let me just double check here because this is the first time where it's really come into play um, spawn activate yeah so it doesn't really say whether or not the monsters can use portals and I don't think they can use portals in in the base rules if it's even specified. I've never had them like jump through a portal. So I think the portals are kind of hero only. So this guy's essentially stuck in here. Also, one last um, keyword that they added to the solo rules is guard. And so this guy and this guy who are in the rooms with the eagles are guarding, which means they're not gonna spend any movement to try and open that door and come out. So we are just gonna kind of ignore their activation when the time comes and you'll see what I'm talking about um, for that. Um, right off the bat, one of my, you know, uh, things that I don't like about the solo rules is that they haven't changed the maps at all. Um, 
you know, I don't think it would take much for Simon to say, okay, the Rookery map only needs to be four of their board tiles instead of six, because pretty much this whole half of the map, I'm not going to go near. I have no reason to. My starting three are up here in the upper left corner. And, you know, I didn't even bother putting doors on the other player starting areas because I'm not going to spend a movement to go into. This is normally a player starting area. I'm not going to spend a movement to open this door and then walk in here. It, it's pointless. It's a dead end. So, um, I really feel like, again, and you can also tell that, you know, I'm panned out here pretty good and I still don't even have everything in view for you guys. This game was already a table hog when you played with four people. I don't feel like it needs to be as big of a table hog with just one person. But so that's uh, kind of a con, con number one there for the solo rules that they essentially just slap some rules onto their traditional boards and, and scenarios. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I guess we will start with. Hmm, who do we want to start with? I guess we'll start with Maya. She'll spend a movement to open this door, obviously. And then, um, the question is, do we want to come down here and try and take this guy out? Or do we just kind of hide in our space? The monsters are each going to get three movement each if they end up being the ones activating. So this guy can make it to me. Normally he's got a movement of only one, so he would only be able to go here or here. Um, <clears throat> but maybe Maya just wants to stay put and she could fire a Nova Bolt all the way down here. Um, and I know you guys can't really see it, but I've got, I'll show them to you as I get them. Uh, Maya does have one um, severe nosebleed. This is her death curse that's holding up an occupied slot. But um, other than that, they have, you know, Johan's got all the good stuff, the Captain's Blade and the Skullcracker. Green Sleeves has got a Crescent Bow and a Quick Shot Bow. Um, and Maya's got all the, the magic here. So Maya's gonna go ahead and use Nova Bolt. For those of you who are not familiar with the, uh, the game, here's Nova Bolt, so if we are able to roll any criticals, we can actually hit this guy as well. But she only rolls two attack dice. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, and those are complete misses because it was a ranged attack. So um, this guy doesn't retaliate since we basically just whiffed at him. We didn't do any damage or anything like that. So. Um, okay, so that was Maya's turn, and we'll put an activation token on Maya. Her special ability is actually that I can use each magic attack twice, so uh, Nova Bolt is not completely gone yet. So let's see what we want to do with Lance here. Um, I think for Lance, we could go one, two, three, and take out this guy again, but I think we're gonna save that guy for green sleeves. So let's just bring Johan out right here, and he's gonna attack with uh, Skullcracker, which you know, I can show you guys Skullcracker for anybody that's not familiar with the game. Skullcracker, if we oops, if we deal at least one wound, the target is dazed, which means they're gonna have to use instead of an attack action, they'll use it to stand back up. I kind of knocked them over, so he is. Rolling for three with Skullcracker. Okay, so he just got one, but that is all I needed was one hit. So we got to put one over here to this guy. And again, he cannot retaliate since he's dazed. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and get green sleeves out here. We'll go one, two, and yeah, so I've got some options here I could fire this way, or I can fire this way. Um, hmm. What do I want to do? I think I'm gonna take this guy out since I can get to here and try and take this guy out early on. Um, Cause as soon as I do, I get his reward. So let's go ahead and attack with, um, You 
Yeah, none of these guys have any shield. So. Also plus one die, plus one die if close to any monsters. It deals a wound. The target is dazed. Okay. All right. So let's. Um, when attacking with a bow, each. All right. So I'm going to use my quick shot here, which is just kind of a crossbow. But green sleeves is going to get um, any criticals that he lands as an additional hit with any of his bows. So he's firing off three here. And we just got one hit. Man, we are not rolling so good. So that guy's there. Um, he can retaliate, but he is too far away. Um, yeah, this guy's not going to retaliate because he's not in range. So I think we're good. It's been a while. Um, okay. So that ends my turn. So now it is the monster's turn. And the first thing that we would check for is, do we need to spawn any monsters? And this is one of the things that I don't like. Um, again, it's kind of a con towards their solo rules is spawning prior to the monster's turn. So if I have spent a ton of time, say this area right here was just crowded with people and I spent a lot of time to clear them out and give myself a, some breather room, well, if I filled up the monster spawn board and then rolled, you know, the, these two symbols here to spawn the monsters back in, I could have effectively taken this guy out and then he would come right back in and could get another turn. And so it's like, well, what was the point of me trying to defeat him? Um, so I really think it's kind of backwards that you would spawn them at the beginning of the monster turn before you would activate any monsters. Um, so, but that's how we'll, we will play these first couple rounds. We'll see if I even fill up this track. So then the first thing you would do is just like you would spawning to determine the attack, you're going to roll two die and we've got double swords here. So double swords is essentially this guy. If this guy wasn't here, we'd look for the closest guy. This guy's guarding, then it would either be this guy or this guy. Um, but since this guy's on the space, oh no. I'm sorry, it's not this guy. We look at this space and then we flip over this top card, which happens to be a spirit beast man. So he's gonna get three movement and he can go one, two, and we'll just put him here because that's easier. Um, puts him closer. He followed all movement restrictions. If there had been two people blocking his way, he wouldn't have been able to move there. Um, but at this point he cannot attack. He's not adjacent, he's not a ranged character. Oh no, he is a ranged character. I'm sorry. This is I haven't had the spear beast man. Okay. So he's gonna attack for three. He's actually gonna attack for four dice because he has monsters close to him. So let's have him um since both Johan and Greensleeves are in the same spot, we are going to have Johan uh defend this hit. So let's first roll for the spearman. And he actually missed on these because he's arranged so we'll change that to a hit and there's two hits all right so he's hitting johan for two and let's see johan has not only his he's got trusty blade which gives him an extra one he's already rolling for three he's got trusty blade which gives him four captain's blade which gives him five and the armor which gives him seven so um i've only got six white die all right, and there's my two blocks. That's all I need. Okay. Um, so I defended that attack. Good. Then it's back to it. Oh, no. Then we do it one more time. So we're going to roll these two dice again. And um, so we're looking here. Who's closest to here? And which Orc Marauder is closest to here? Well, this is a captain. And this is an Orc Marauder. And so it would be this guy who is closest. So he's going to just move three, one, two, three to try and get into the action. And that's it. Um, so here's my third con coming for the solo rules. I don't feel like that's really that much. There, there is all this stuff going on the board here. And, um, you know, Ar Arcadia Quest is, is kind of like a puzzle, but it's also like... A, I'm trying to akin what uh, think of what 
type of uh, video game. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Call of Duty was, at least for me, uh, or a lot of those first-person shooters that you would you would be trying to control an area or get to a certain point and you would run in and you might kill a few people on the opposing team but then you get mowed down and you instantly you spawn back in again or maybe you had to wait 10 seconds but then you were charging back into the battle you didn't care about um, how many kills you took essentially that's giving the other team points sometimes but you didn't really worry about it it wasn't like an adventure game where if you killed you got killed you lost the game or had to start over um, yes you gain death curses in Arcadia quest but I, I find that it would be almost impossible to try and get through these without um, taking a death here and there so I did it on the very first scenario um, but that scenario is super easy so all right um, so yeah, I, that's another one of my criticisms is that I feel like really just not quite enough happens on the monster's turns. So, all right, let's move on um, and give our guys at least a couple more turns here. <clears throat> so, um, and again, like, does this guy just stay dazed, I guess? Um, so... Okay, who do we want to start with? We've got Maya, who doesn't really need to move. She's kind of protected in her little spot here, but she cannot fire, or no, she can fire through my two people because they're on, on my team. I'm pretty sure I'm remembering that correctly. Or I can move her out um, and start hitting on this guy. And maybe we'll do that. Um, hmm. I realized she has a ring, permanent bling, which gives her one reroll that I should have used. Maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should just race to see who can get in here to get this guy first, and then we'll worry about this guy. Or maybe we should worry about this guy here. Hmm. Tough decisions. Actually, she's just going to fire at this guy. So, she'll roll her two. Alright, she's got one. I've got one reroll. That's a hit and roll again all right so three hits one of which can go on to this guy so i'm going to hit here and um i guess technically this guy should have moved up to there last turn with his retaliate action makes his movement but then he can't do anything or no i think he just stays there if he can't hit anybody anyways he now has three hits, and he still can't uh, retaliate, so he's gone. Oh, he's got four hits. Yeah, yeah, he's dead. All right, he's got no shields. Okay, and that was an orc captain, so we are getting two points. All right, so Maya could move now, though. Maybe she will do that. Um, let's see here. Just get you out of one, two, three. Just kind of stick her over there. Okay. Johan now is going to go, and he's going to come down right here and maybe go one, two, three. Or does he want to go right here? Hmm. He's probably got the best chance to take this guy out. Banner Spearman, though, is, is pretty much the same. All right. So let's just go ahead and take him out. So we'll just move one and we'll attack this guy here. We're gonna go ahead and use our Knight's Blade, which is gonna allow us to roll four attack dice. And I have two re-rolls if I want to use them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use two re-rolls. All right, so we've got two hits so far, and that's it. Um, unfortunate. Wasn't very much. And now he is in range to retaliate, so he's going to roll three. One of these will become a hit. And more in, and he's going to hit two, and again... Johan's just a shielding beast, so. 
Okay, there's our two blocks we needed. Okay. All right, so Johan was able to hit the guy for two. And that's it. So let's bring in green sleeves then. Let's bring him in right here at the same spot. And he is going to use his bow, his regular bow, which is also three. Okay, so there's one. Let's change this to that and re-roll our burst. Okay, so he's hitting for two. So this will kill the beast man, but the beast man does get retaliate. So the beast man is going to go after him with he's hitting for at least two right now. Three. Green sleeves gets three. Yeah, three total defense dice. Nothing. Okay, so that was pretty bad. Three hits on green sleeves. One, two, three. Okay. All right, so that's, this guy's gone. He's out of the way, he's out of the picture. Um. All right, so now we go back to monster turn. So we roll two dice in. We are over here again, and we are looking for the closest Spear Beast Man. Who there's only one left on the board, so this is gonna be him. So he's gonna go one, two, and again, we'll have him attack Johan. All right, so this becomes a hit. Roll this. All right, so he's hitting Johan for two. Johan gets to roll all of his dice. Uh-oh. There's one, and he gets one more because he technically rolls seven, so he took one damage there. And then we roll these again. We're looking for double swords, which is right here, and we're looking for the goblin archer. That's obviously this guy. So he only needs to go right here to be within range of anybody. And so again, we're gonna have him go after Johan. All right, he hit, sitting Johan for one. And there's just Johan's one block. So we are good to go. There, and that's the monster turn again. Um, okay. So, we replaced one Spear Beast Man with another. Um, and I'm gonna need to rest soon, so how do we wanna do this? Okay, let's go with, um, Johan first. He's gonna attack with a trusty blade, which is three attack dice. All right, and hit this guy for two. All right, this guy will retaliate. Three dice, he hits Johan for one. Okay, Johan's got plenty of defense. Okay, and then does Johan wants to bother to move. Maybe he will. I mean, essentially this is probably the best thing I could do is to come down here and just pause right there. Then let's do um, Maya. She's going to do her other Nova Bolt here, which is just two. And she just hits this guy for one. And he's got a health of four, so he's going to attack back. Four. He's hitting her for two right now. Three. Okay, three. And she only rolls one defense die and she misses completely. All right, so three to Maya. She does have five health though, and she can recover her health with life drain. So she's got three damage. <clears throat> All right, so I guess Greensleeves now is gonna have to 
take this guy on as well. So since we're adjacent, we will go ahead and use the parrying blade. Attacks for two, and there's two attacks. So what he is gonna get to retaliate, since we didn't overkill him. And he hits for three. So green sleeve gets three dice. There's one, two, come on, we need one more. No! All right, so this guy is dead, but so is green sleeves. So green sleeves has to come back and go on his card. We move all his tokens. All right, and he gets a death token. Okay, and Maya actually has only four health because of her severe nosebleed, which is down here off the of camera. So. Let's do another monster turn. Just need two dice. Uh, okay, which is right here. And we are looking for Hammer Beast Men, which are um, trapped. So we kind of got off scot free there. And then we roll again. And then we go. You know what? I'm wondering. <coughs> Hold on. Uh, okay, so I shouldn't be rolling these dice again. So it should be the same activation spot. I don't think this has been too deal breaking so far, but um, here, so we're staying here and we're looking for Orc Marauders. The closest Orc Marauder is here. This one can actually reach somebody. So he'll move here and attack Johan for three. Okay, ooh, three hits. So Johan's gonna roll all of his dice. He's got two, one more for seven. And so he takes a hit, okay. Okay, so that essentially is the monster's turn again. So let's do, um, Yeah, yeah, that just just doesn't quite seem enough. But let me reset all of this real quick and kind of show you guys how I played in the last scenario. But I'm wondering now if that one's just too tough. So we'll need to find something in the middle. But uh, give me one second, I'll reset this. Okay, so I reset everything. Um, everybody's kind of back to where they were at the beginning of the game. And so for me, um, a lot of my, and this is very akin to like, you know, Zombicide or Descent. For me, especially in the solo play, I know that Arcadia Quest was originally kind of supposed to be this like PvP little arena style battle game. But when you throw solo into the mix, it, it makes it feel more like Zombicide or Descent to me. So... In both of those, when the enemy activates, all of the group types activate at once. So, for example, if um, you know you're playing Descent and the Wolves attack, um, they or they come up. If you're playing with the um, Road to Legends app, um, when the Wolves' turn comes up, they all come at you. Um, every single one of them activates, and some of them just aren't far away enough at the beginning. Um, same thing with Zombicide, when it's the zombies turn, they all take their one movement and then they all attack if they're near you. So that's how I played my second scenario and it worked, you know, it, it wasn't game breaking or anything like that. It, it wasn't, I completed the scenario, it wasn't easy, Green Sleeves died twice and Maya died once. Um, but I was able to, I did the close the gate scenario. I was able to get up there, close the gate and defeat Nort Captain, so it all worked. So let's just see now how it works where I'm not going to roll any dice because I think that's kind of fiddly. All I'm going to do is simply uh, flip over two cards and these guys, like I said before, they're not going to come out and these guys are not going to come out. So if I roll these guys, I just kind of get like a pass that turn. Um, but I'm also not going to move them three. I'm only going to move them for their regular movement value which for each one of these guys at level two and three is one space 
if they are ranged and can reach me or if they're adjacent to me, then they'll attack. Um, also, I'm not going to spawn. We didn't see this in, in my last little playthrough because we only played three rounds, but if I happen to kill off enough people to fill this up, I'm not going to spawn them at the beginning of the round, especially not if I'm activating every single villain type um, that's on the board when I flip over one of these cards. So if I fill up the RIP board, I will spawn them after the monster turn. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Um, oh, and one other thing I did say is that there is no, um, the basic minions do not, um, minor minions do not retaliate. So the two major minions, which are the two, the Hammer Beastmen and the Hammer Spearmen, they will retaliate like normal, but the minor minions will not. So that was just kind of my way of mitigating everybody coming after me if their card gets flipped over, is that I'm not going to give them a chance to retaliate against me and then turn around and attack me. So let's just see how this goes, and then I'd just love to hear everybody's opinion on the matter, especially Simon's if they want to give it. So, again, I'm going to play where I'm activating all of my heroes at once. So I'm going to kind of stick with the same plan of we'll just attempt to kind of get into here. So Maya is going to open the door here with her one movement, and then she's going to attack this guy straight ahead with Nova Bolt. All right, so she hits for two. I've got a reroll, but I'm, I'm just happy with two. Um... And again, this guy doesn't retaliate, so I'm not even going to worry about that. I hit him from a distance, and he'll get his turn eventually. <clears throat> um, okay, then we will have Johan go. So we'll have Johan do what he did last time. He's going to come out here. He's going to hit the guy with Skullcracker. Just three dice. He's got two re-rolls. Ooh, we might not need him. There's four, and that's enough to overkill the guy, so we'll just stop there. So he would have been dead no matter what. All right, and Johan already moved, so he's done. And then we've got green sleeves. So what do we want to do with green sleeves? He unfortunately was tucked off here to the side, so he's got to go one, two, and I really don't want to put him right next to the spear beast man because I want Johan to kind of be the tank of the team. So I'm actually gonna move him back here. I'll get this token, which is a health token. Put that on his card. And the only guy he can see, well, he can see two guys here. So let's, I'm actually gonna take this guy or attempt to take that guy because he's ranged. The orc captain's gonna take a few turns for him to come up to us and be effective. So we'll go after the goblin archer with our, <clears throat> um, well, it doesn't matter. We'll just use our slingshot because that's only got two attack die in this game, how much. Okay, but we missed completely, so. Um, I don't have any rerolls with him, that's fine. Um, all right, so that was my hero turn. Now, without rolling any dice, I'm just gonna flip over two cards here. All right, Spear Beast Man. Again, they only have a movement of one. So this guy's gonna move in here and join his buddy. But this guy can move up here and it's my choice. So I will move him right there. Um, actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll just leave him right there. Okay, so he gets to attack Johan for three and he hits hitting for two and Johan again still has all of his defense dice. All right, this one's cocked. And that one, okay. But I'm defending for two no matter what, so I'm not gonna worry about the rest. Okay, so that was all the Spear Beastmen. Now one thing that would probably be good if you are if you decided to go this way when designing the scenarios is to, again, maybe shrink the map a little bit or remove some people. It wouldn't be hard. It's not so bad that there's plenty of room because like this guy, it's gonna take him a little while to get to me and this guy. Um, but maybe remove some minions. Like, do we need all this many archers here? Or maybe, you know, just one orc captain. You know, maybe just put an X on your your map in the solo scenario. Who knows? Um, but that was just one card. And then the other one is Hammer Beastmen, which again, we already spoke about. These guys are trapped 
in their spaces. Um, so we just kind of got a free round there. So it's back to me. And Johan is going to go first. So we'll have Johan use Captain's Blade's four attack dice against this guy right next to him. All right, so we've got two. Let me flip this over and an exploder. All right, four against the beast man. All right, six would have overkilled him, so he is going to get to retaliate for three. And he's just got one, two. I'm racking it up here. All right, so he's attacking back for two. Yawn gets to roll all these dice again. One of these fell through. Didn't get rolled properly. Okay, but there's my... No, he, was he hitting me for three? No, just two. All right. Okay, so I defended against that, but I did hit him enough to kill him. So he comes off, and I've now killed... I'm not keeping up with my gold, but the Spear Beast Man was two, and the Marauder was one, so... All right. Okay, and now Johan can move. So he's actually gonna go one, two, one, two, and then open up this door for three. All right. So now who do we want to have go? Um, one, two, three, one, two, three. Neither one of these other guys can get into that room but at least green sleeves can, you can go one, two, and shoot this guy here. So let's do that. Um, actually, we'll put him here, three. So we'll shoot into the room. Uh, let's make sure we get this guy. So actually, let's use parrying blades since we're adjacent. That's just two dice um, and one, no rerolls, okay. So we actually didn't hit this guy. And since he's a minor minion, we're not going to, uh, he does not get retaliated. All right. Finally, Maya, what do we want to do with Maya? Maya can either continue to shoot down here at him and stay safe. Maybe we'll do that. Um, she's just gonna continue to aim down the row at him, hoping for at least one. Okay, and that will kill him uh, again he doesn't retaliate so she'll get one coin for that and I guess we can go ahead and let her move then now since the road is clear one two three she'll enter space in here and she gets the token okay again back to the monster phase which I feel in my scenario is a little quicker so the spear beast man here does only need to move once. So he'll move up here and he'll attack Johan for three. Oh my. So these become two hits and then he gets to reroll two more. Okay, so he's hitting Johan for four. That's pretty nasty. Johan gets seven dice. Okay, so two. So he knocked out two of those, but he's still gonna take two hits. All right. Um, I do have two re-rolls. Do I want to use them now? No, I think I'm gonna save them. Um, no, I should go ahead and use them now because this is all still the, the one turn. Okay, so I did go ahead and block them. Because I think the turn resets at the end of uh, At the after the monster phase, the turn's gonna reset. So, okay, and the other beast man is over here. So we flip over one more card, Orc Marauders. Now again, this guy's gonna go one. He can't attack. That's a captain. Orc Marauder moves one here, and he moves one here. So, again, they're they're pinching in on us, but we are basically gonna get into here, hopefully get this thing, and then get out. And we can also use the portals to kind of jump around the map. So. It's got that a little bit of zombicide feel to it though, where everybody's kind of closing in on us and it's, as opposed to guys just standing around. So, all right, back to um, my guys. So, uh, Johan, what do we want? Let's, let's start with green sleeves. So green sleeves, it's got his two bows left. Um, 
And so we'll do the crescent bow, which is tacking for three. All right, boom. Plenty enough to kill this little guy. <clears throat> and then green sleeves will come in here, and I'm pretty sure I need to end my turn here, but I do get to pick up this guy, and then my goal for green sleeves will be to get him back here to score that quest. Um, okay, so then Johan just really needs to uh, clear the way or keep. But if I defeat anybody, I'm making it more difficult for Yohan, because then they'll spawn. Hmm. What do we do? What to do? Um, hmm. Yeah, what I think I'm gonna do here is just move one, two, three, and the only guy I can attack now is this guy. So, Put that there and I'm rolling three and I hit him for three which is his overkill anyway so he's gone okay and that is gonna fill up the track so at the end of the monster turn we will spawn some monsters um, all right now if I can kill anybody with Maya she could effectively reduce that person not allow them because they would have not have a spot on the RIP board so um, hmm but I also want to make sure I give help on the next one so let's just move her in here so they're both right on top of the portal next turn she will use life drain um, two which is going to attack for three and she'll hit at this guy here all right boom boom this is a third one boom so that's enough to kill him again we're not worried about kickback and since he's off the board here he's not going to get if i'm rem remembering that correctly i believe he's not going to get to come back in all right so that was all three of my characters i'm also going to need to rest after this um, okay, so to the monsters, first we'll activate some people. So the orc captain here, um, oh, and I need to remove some people here, oops, no, I need to get some gold. One, two, three, okay. All right, so the orc captain, there's only one more on the board and he has a movement of one, so he'll come up here, he'll move one closer. And this other guy has goblin archers. So they only have a movement of one as well. So this guy I'll move. Just like Zombicide, I'm gonna move them all. Now this guy, you know, one of these guys, I guess he could move down here and be within range of somebody. So that leaves room for this guy to move in there. So that makes more thematic sense. So this guy, we'll start with him. He's attacking uh, Johan for two dice. He hits for one. There's Johan's blocks, so that's all he needs. And then this guy will attack Greensleeve to the whiffs big time. All right, so it's my player's turn now. So I'm gonna start with Greensleeves and make it pretty obvious. I'm gonna go one, two, three. And I guess we'll just attack this guy. So, I need to, hmm. yeah, I needed to get out of there. I need to rest my guys, but I also didn't want to get trapped in this hole. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. He's the only one left with anything that can do anything. All right, so he'll attack that guy with his crossbow and he misses completely, no rerolls. Okay, Johan's stuck. He can't do anything. I'm certainly not about to jump him into there with that guy, because um, if he activates next time, he could crush me. Um, okay, so then we just have Maya, who has life drain two, and we'll send, oh wait, I forgot to spawn. I knew I forgot to do something here, so everybody back up. Everybody, I'll, I'll remember I missed with him. We do need to spawn. All right, so we'll start with this guy, let's see going. 
he's going right here. This guy, where is he going? He is also going right here. So see, that makes a difference for green sleeves. This guy is going right here. This guy is going right here as well. Oh yeah, dice roll sometimes. And this guy also tries to go there, but he doesn't fit. Okay, so now back to green sleeves, who cannot go this way. So he's gonna have to go one, two, three. And we're just gonna say that he missed still anyway. So he's right there trying to head for the blue portal. Okay, um, and now Maya is gonna continue her attack on this guy. Yeah, we'll see him. All right, so she hits him for one. She's got a reroll. We'll go ahead and use it. And she hits him for two. Um, he has no retaliate because he's a minor minion. And there's that. Okay, well, let's do one more monster turn here and then we'll call it a day. So goblin archers. Um, this guy can stay put. This guy can stay put. However, this guy comes up here and this guy would move up here so he is in range which means this guy is no longer able to fire shot effectively if we did this still that would be the same thing that this guy would move in this guy would be stuck i guess he could move there but he still cannot shoot diagonally so let's start down here um he's attacking he's hit for one he's hit for two johan's gonna defend the force and Johan's got all his defense dice. Okay, then we'll start with this first guy up here. He's hitting for one. Green sleeves has. Okay, there's one defense, and he takes a hit. Okay, and then the guy behind him attacks. All right, for two. And he defends one, so he takes another hit. Okay. So that was it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, essentially, on my next turn, I might have been able to do it. I definitely will get green sleeves here. These guys, I'll, I'd have to rest around, actually. But after that, these guys would come in here and hopefully take this guy out in one fell swoop, and, and then I would have won the game. But So that's my variant. That's the way... I just find a little bit more enjoyment in playing. It's a little less fiddly with trying to determine which monster is going to attack each round. And I really have not, I've not added any components to, um, you know, you don't need to add any components to the game. So I would love to hear your opinions on the two, uh, whether you like Simon's version or whether you prefer my version. Uh, if you feel like mine or Simon's could use some tweaking, please feel free to leave all of these comments in the section below. Um, I just just love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from Simon, see if they are deciding to make any changes uh, since this is still in beta. And and yeah, because I do love this game. I think it's a great game. Um, the miniatures are great. It's a little bit of a different style of the dungeon crawl because the scenarios are supposed to move pretty fast. You don't worry about dying. Um, so it's kind of like a cross between Descent and Zombicide in my opinion when you're playing this solo mode. So yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and uh, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can get more videos from the Meeple Marathon. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.